Now we have a different kind of session, but one with no less than musical talent. In fact, our next speaker isn't just an amazing world star in music and entertainment and philanthropy. He's also making a very fast-growing hardware business. Please can we welcome Will I Am. Welcome to London, Will. Oh, thanks for having me. You travel a fair bit. Where have you just got off the plane from? Um, I so, remember. So maybe like five days ago, I was in China, and flew from China to LA so I could work on a runoff show. Um, and then two days ago, I was in San Francisco launching our company, I Am Plus, and our product Pulse at Dreamforce. And then we flew here. And this is a typical week. This is a typical week. Okay. So I went to LA like a year and three quarters ago to work on a cover story with Will. And he's the hardest man in the world to pin down because he's literally moving all the time. I think we said at the time, just on commercial airlines that year, you'd done something like, is it 350,000 miles? That was uh, early in the year. So, but <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, I think it was like a million some odd miles. But that's, you know, I've been, I, I tour, I've been touring since 1998. And uh, I've been traveling to and from school since I was seven years old, two hours back and forth ever since I was seven. So I'm used to traveling. I remember uh, the relationship I was in before we went on tour, she was like, I was like, babe, I'm getting ready to go on tour. So, you know, it shouldn't be too long. So she was like, how long are you thinking to be on the road? Oh, it's just like four months. <laughs> that was 1998. I haven't stopped touring yet. <laughs> but it's cool, though. When we, were, <laughs> when we were working on the Wired cover story, you talked about what you call pop thropology, the idea that the more you travel, the more you observe, the more you see patterns about where the world is moving. Yeah. So anthropologists, you know, they, they don't study the impact. They study to get knowledge. So once I learned, like, started asking tips on anthropologists, like, what they do and how they go about doing it, um, I borrowed a lot of those tactics um, and utilized it in my work. So I was like, so I'm like a pop anthropologist because I study the impact. You know, it helps me when I write, helps me whatever I'm, what I'm doing, to figure out, you know, the commonality between different cultures, different, uh, you know, demographics. Um, and I noticed corporations, they say things like, you know, this is really great for the millennials. So I was like, you're really, really telling your age once you say millennials. When in actuality, like someone who's 13 years old thinks the same way someone who's 30 year old thinks. And there's no different than sci-fi. Sci-fi to me isn't a 13 year old. She's a screenager and I'm a screenager. We're all screenagers with multiple screens and we, we absorb and engage in content and the social platforms if we choose to use them the same way, kind of. So there's really no difference between a 13-year-old and a 50-year-old, but a 50-year-old calls her a millennial. That guy is old. <laughs> right? We're screenagers. So when we got you to guest edit an edition of Wired, it was a really lively edition because it had everything from you know, mapping companies to Dean Kamen, people in your network. Um, the reason we got excited was not because you're a big name in music, you're a TV celebrity. It was because, you know, in the classic Wired way, you cross boundaries, you innovate, you bring in new kind of business models, new kind of technologies, new kinds of building networks and reaching people. You had just launched a product when we were talking, which was a new kind of camera for the iPhone. Yeah, so... Um a guy that I work closely with, um, that we've you know founded this company, I am plus with Chandra. Um, we wanted to put on an exercise to see if you know our collaboration was worth collaborating. And I was like, hey, let's let's make this product and see if we could do it in this amount of time and get it in stores. We came up with the idea in June, and the whole exercise was to get it in stores 
for Christmas holiday and have a shop within a shop. Right? If we can do that, then damn, we can do some pretty big shit. <laughs> and we did that. We came up with the idea to have a camera accessory that covers the iPhone. Um, and it was iPhone 4, right around the time the iPhone 5 was out, because the whole premise was to do a limited amount. Um, only so we could prove that we could get into stores at a, at a short, in short order. And it was successful. And we found some awesome engineers and designers along the way to build our company, Iron Plus. So it's a new accessible way to manufacture things. You don't need to own the factories. You can get things to market in months just by using logistics? Um, for me, just by leveraging your reach. Um, and, you know, I see my world. Big companies come to us all the time trying to leverage us to sell their product. And the amount of money they, they, they spend on R&D to develop that product, you know, it's probably around the amount of money you're going to have to pay a celebrity to promote that product. So I was like, oh, wow. So you mean to tell me to develop whatever that gizmo gadget, it costs the same amount of money a big company would pay me to endorse it? But then I don't own the upside of me going out and leveraging my reach? Ah, the world just changed, <laughs> right? Because that means I should take the risk to develop something myself and promote it myself and put together a team myself and participate in the upside. Right, so that's it. The world changed for me. <laughs> Once I figured out the math, I was like, wait a second here. <laughs> Mr. Cornball does not have a relationship with the cool kids, therefore needing me to go translate their message to the cool kids. And then I don't participate on Mr. Cornball's project? And I got a cool little, you know, couple of zeros right here with one in front of it or two in front of it. Ah. Uh, Fuck that. <laughs> yeah. So you'd already been a pretty astute entrepreneur and investor. You'd um, put some money very early on into a company called Beats. Oh, no, Beats. That was, I don't think anyone put money in to start Beats. We started Beats just by leveraging. Jimmy Iving, that guy is the wizard, right? So I came home from tour one day, and I was like, Jimmy. We need to do hardware. It was 2005, 2004 and a half. <laughs> and I was like, we need to do hardware, Jimmy. Hardware, hardware, hardware. He was like, what are you talking about hardware? Well, hardware, right? Our music, our industry is falling apart. And our music is just selling other people's hardware. We need to sell our own hardware. Well, you know why they call it hardware? It's because it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was like, no, no, you know what's hard? Filling up Wembley is hard. Freaking three nights at Stop the France is hard. You know, having your hook in everyone's head, no matter what nationality it is, that's hard. Making hardware? That ain't that hard. <laughs> so a year later, he was like, I was walking on the Dre, I was walking on the beach with Dre, and he told me that his attorneys wanted to sell sneakers. So I told him, F sneakers, let's make speakers. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be a part of it? I was like, but I really want to do like hardcore hardware. I want like software and operating systems. That's where my head's at. How do you think we're going to get there? We got to start somewhere. Let's start here. I was like, let's go. So that's how we started Beats. Did OK. We did. <laughs> They're pretty freaking awesome. And you have a new product, which you're yeah, just so, launching now. So right around when we started IM Plus is when the first Beats thing happened with HGC. Right? So that, that's when I started my, my, uh, my company. Because I would sit in the meetings all the time and suggest things like, we should be doing this. We'll get there. No, no, we should be doing this. And then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to be, I need a team to go fast so I can do those things that I'm talking about. Um, and so we, we did that. And then uh, the Apple thing came out, you know, Newton, Apple came out the sky, hit me in the head, hit us in the head. 
No, I, only person that knew that was happening was Jimmy. And uh, hats off to that guy. Jimmy Iving is a master, and uh, Apple is an amazing company. Um, and right, uh, right around the time when I found out about it, we were already, you know, we've, we're already a year and a half into our device. Um, the operating system, you know, the hardware, using it, you know, testing it amongst the team. I think at the time when the Apple thing happened, we had about 40 engineers. Now we're 50, 50 guys. And we coupled those engineers and surrounded them with cut and sew folks that make, you know, in this world, this, this conversation people are having right now called wearables, they're limited to this thing called wearables. They're just thinking things on your wrist, maybe some glasses, and that's it. So I was like, no, let's complete the conversation. Freaking jackets. Let's do shoes, backpacks, let's fucking go. <laughs> and so we got cut and sew folks and freaking designers. So you got like coders like, well, I want to show you this new thing that I, we created on the device, it's really awesome. <laughs> and so I'm like, man, guys, that's awesome. Then it's fashion guys like, oh my gosh, you gotta see this jacket that I made, well, that's so beautiful. <laughs> oh, you don't know it? And it's all those accents in one room, I'm like, what the fuck, this is great. It's, it's really, seriously, our office is pretty freaking fantastic. So tell us about the new device. So the device is um, it's a cuff, right? On the cuff, that's not a watch. People put on watches like this, right? The cuffs you put on like that. Um, it's pretty awesome. The battery is all here, speaker's there. Radio here, radio there, SIM card here, chipset under it, um, curved OLED screen here, um, it's 3G, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, um, make phone calls, no phone required, this is your phone, emails, SMS, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, streaming music, all on your wrist. I think we've got some pictures for the screen to show us up close what it looks like. I think the video's first to show you our mission, what we're trying to accomplish. Oh, no, that's it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you describe the design? And oh, so the design is based, you know, what would a fashion house do? Right, not what a t what, not, let's not think what a technological company would do. Let's bake technology in it, but come from the perspective of a fashion house. What would Gucci do? What would Louis Vuitton, Yves Saint Laurent, what would Chanel do? What type of product would they put tech into? Not let's make this device and then sprinkle some fashion on it. No, 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 no. Let's do fashion and put tech inside of it. Let's lead with the fabulous ones, the ones who create things for your body and you would wear it if it did nothing. I don't know what the Chanel cuff does. It just has some CCs on it, and girls are walking around you, and they don't do anything. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, space to attack. Let's disrupt there, because fashion does nothing. And if you could truly, truly create something desirable where people feel like expressing themselves, and then now they can express themselves on social platforms, booyah, like that. <laughs> So it's, it's an IM Plus device, but we don't call it a watch. It's not a watch. And well, it's not I think a watch is a, watch is an overused word, and it's a very limited space to actually create in when it comes to, you know, crossing genders, a watch. To expect a female to wear the same watch a guy wears is a hard task, it's a hard tool to try to consider. But I could wear a cuff and a girl could wear a cuff and the way it fits me is totally different than the way girls have been wearing cuffs forever. It fits them a little looser than a guy. So, show you a little what happened uh, when I gave it to a girl. She's like, oh my gosh, it's kind of loose on me. I was like, yeah, but it's kind of like a Chanel cuff. You're right, I love it. <laughs> All you have to do is say that. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, right? Oh my gosh. What do we call it, a cuff? This is a, a smart cuff. A smart cuff. A wise band. This is my new band. 
And when does it hit the shops? Uh, soon timber. It would be out soon. They, they gave me some guidelines on when not to say. I'm itching to say when it's coming out, but I. Soon timber. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now <-vimber. laughs> <laughs> That was good. And so <laughs> it's a connected device. So you do a deal with a phone network? Yeah. So yesterday, when we were two days ago in America, um, we brought it was a it was an amazing keynote. I was, so, I was so nervous, because I'd never done that before. 6,000 people in the room, and we brought out all of our partners. Um, Salesforce created an um, enterprising app on our device. Esri created GIS Maps on our device. Um, so what GIS Maps, what you'll be able to do is, what's the financial makeup of where I am five mile radius? Give me the safest route home. Am I in a safe neighborhood? Those type of, you know, uh, that type of data on our maps on our device. So things that are not on your phone right now is what will be on our device. Um, so we brought out Esri, Jack Dangerman spoke. Um, human, so human that's on your iPhone now, the first place would be outside of the iPhone would be on the Pulse. Um, Encore came and spoke. Um, we have this uh, technology that we've developed with this Israeli company called Beyond Verbal that um, you know when you call your loved one or someone you care about, you're like, is something all right? I hear something, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. No, no, seriously, there's something wrong with you. No, I'm perfectly fine. I hear it in your voice, there's something wrong. Okay, well, here's what's bothering me. And then you wish you never asked in the first place? <laughs> so they've created an algorithm for that. And on our device, it's called Vibe. So if I choose to, I could record my Vibe and then share my Vibe amongst people I care about. So my mom could give me a call and be like, I, I could, you're stressed out, what's wrong? Or I could call my mom and be like, Ma, your gym is red, is everything all right? You'll be able to do that on the device. And the guys from Beyond Verbal came and spoke. AT&T, our mobile provider in America, uh, Jeff came out and spoke, and Telefonica. And O2 is our mobile partner here in the UK. Which is a nice coincidence, because they're our partner for Y2014. So. Mm -hmm. Ronan Dunn, this is not commercial, this is just random editorial, but Ronan Dunn, who runs Telefonica in the UK, come tell us briefly what this means, Telefonica, and how you're working with a crazy dude like this and making hardware. I hope I'm not Mr. Cornball. No, no, you're not Cornball. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, look, we're, the fact that we're a partner to Wired tells you that we like to see the world uh, differently and you know we've been working on this for quite some time and Will and I have been talking about this project for quite some time and two things I would say is the, things need to change Will wants to break the rules we absolutely want to break the rules and whether it be technology it's not about technology it's about the possibilities of technology there's two things I share none of Will's talent but I share two things that he's passionately interested in that I am too one is young people and the other is technology. And I think we have an opportunity here to create a new category. It's a fusion of fashion, of music, and technology. And those of you who know O2 will know that in our DNA, music and technology are absolutely there, whether it be the world's most successful live entertainment venue up the road, or whether it be the way we have created a new relationship with artists. We don't do celebrity endorsement. We've never done it. What we do is we work with like-minded people, and that's why we're so excited about this. Great. Well, thanks for Thank sharing. You. So, you've got a video that's going to explain a bit more. They are leaders, and there are followers. And followers follow leaders. And leaders are followers, too. But they don't follow the crowd. They follow their gut. They follow their instinct. They dance to the beat of their own drum. They have the pulse because they follow their dream. They go against all odds. They're the oddballs, the bizarre, the weirdos, the freaks, the dreamers, the unique. They're hip hop, they're punk rock, they're geek, they're chic. They are artistes, the black sheep. And a lot of people think they are outcasts, cast from society. But the reality is, they are an army of strange, imaginative, wild, and complex, beautiful people. And they are leaders. They are cultural tastemakers. 
They're trailblazers. These are the people that set the stage. These are the people that rock the stage. They are the ones who think of things you can't fathom and imagine the things that have not been imagined. I am Will, and we are Fashionology. So we've been, um, you know, working hard assembling this um, unlikely marriage, you know, the odd couple of geeks and sheiks, fashion folk and engineers, um, songwriters, directors, hardware developers. Um, and that's what it looks like when a company does their own spots, makes their own music, and makes their own product. And, and trying to bring passion and emotion in a very robotic, technological conversation that the giants have been having. Um, so this is our, our, uh, the center of our universe. We have a whole bunch of other products that revolve around it. So this like, is called The Pulse. It's called The Pulse. And how big do you think the market is? The market is, the market is huge. When you really marry fashion and technology, like, just think how big the fashion world is, and then think how big the, techn the technology world is. And when you truly marry them, right now it's like hard to really see how big it is, but you have to imagine how big it's going to be, because it's where it all is leading, where, it all head, where it's all heading towards. Right? 2030, you're not going to have a gadget in your pocket. Your pocket's going to be a gadget. 2023, you're not going to have uh, you know, speakers in your bag. Your bag's going to be speakers. <laughs> right? Why are you going to buy speakers and put it in your bag? When your bag should be power and sound that blues to, to your wrist, right? We've created jackets that when the sleeve touches the pulse, you have two days usage because you can put more power in your jacket than you can in a freaking device. We have 4,000 milliamps of power in jackets that those models are wearing at the end of the freaking thing. 4,000 milliamps of power in the jacket, right? So how big is the market? How big is your imagination, I ask? That's the better question. And, and, and um, there's another video that I want to show that, um, um, I don't know what order it is, but this whole mission is to inspire kids in inner cities to take an interest in STEM, right? As big as the tech world is, right? It's huge, trillion dollar business with hardware and, you know, uh, the, uh, the mobile carriers combined. Big, huge industry. But kids in the inner city aren't dreaming in that direction. It isn't like, you know, some dude uh, in the inner city is like, yeah, man, I can't wait to create my app. That's not what it is. Girls aren't dreaming in that direction. As big as it is, it isn't, hasn't spilled into our, to our streets to where kids dream that direction. So part of our mission is to inspire these kids. And I think the reason why they don't dream that direction is because they don't have anybody to relate to that brought something to culture. Right? They don't have someone that brought an operating system to culture for them to dream that way. So we built an operating system called Anita. And you ask Anita, wait, wait, it's a voice navigation that, that, navigates, uh, that helps you navigate through the pulse. So you ask her, call Polo, call my mom. SMS my mom when I pass Main Street. Call my mom when I pass Hollywood and Vine. Right? Marrying calls and maps and calendar, and contacts, plugging them all into each other. Because right now on your smartphone, it does pretty smart things, but some things it does isn't that smart. Like you have a clock app and a calendar app. When in real life, it goes minutes, seconds, minutes, hours, days, months. So why do you have 
two separate ways of telling time on your smartwatch, if it's that smart. So what we did was we connected all these you know, different apps and plugged them into each other. So Anita could do virtual tasks, horizontal, and diagonal tasks. So things like that. So I want to show you this little video um, that, that, that points to how impactful this mission has already been to kids in inner cities. Thank you, Will. Um, I just want to um, say, every day in Bow Heights, I wake up having to make a choice. Like Will said, I can make the choice of to go into drugs or to go into a gang. But I decide instead to make apps, to be in robotics, to be in the after school program that, that Will has provided to our community. <laughs> About what Will was saying at the beginning, he found his way out and these are the people we're looking into now, Will. And I've never actually told you how proud, how thankful we are for having you in the community. Not only as a leader and someone who made it out, but like you said, we're never gonna get Superman in the community. And to us, you are a Superman. You didn't need a movie. Thank you, Will. We truly appreciate everything you've done for the community you. and you've done for the world. So, uh, oops, sorry. I was just going to say, just because you know everybody, you're also able to collaborate with some exceptional talents, and there's one person who you're collaborating with who's here, who I think we should introduce into the conversation. Yes. So, please can we welcome Zaha Hadid. <laughs> so, Will, do you want to explain exactly how you two got together on this project? Uh -huh. I'm not gonna cry. <laughs> so, um, you know, I Google things and search for awesome stuff online, and one of the most awesome, amazing designers, architects, dreamer, maker that we have in culture today is Zaha Hadid. So. One day, I was just looking at her buildings, like, wow, look at that building. I wonder if she would want to collaborate on our device. Because I saw her shoes, and her rings, and her bracelets. And the first thing that hit my head was, let's reach out to Zaha Hadid to see if she would be interested in making a smart device and, and designing it from an art fashion perspective. Um, and so we reached out to her, and I was blown away by her office, and the tables, and more importantly, the person. Because she's so nice, so open-minded, and it, it was cosmic, kismic that, that we were to meet. And you know, I just, she's an amazing person and does amazing things. And thank you so much for you know, believing in you know, our little vision here and the things that we're doing. You know, because there's a lot of giants out there that, that make technology that, you know, she could be working with. And she, she chose to work with us, and I'm really, really overwhelmed and blessed. Thank you so much. No, thank you very much. We're it, very delighted, and uh, we welcome these collaborations that add something to our, uh, to our work. And we always want to engage with things we don't know much about. Uh, you know, so it's uh, also as to the architecture or whatever. Uh, and I think that I've always believed that, you know, we can do anything if we uh, know the, the, the skill. And um, so it's very exciting for us. And when you're designing a smart device, presumably your practice hasn't done many smart devices. You've done um, all sorts of things. Must have been none. <laughs> so how do you decide as a designer this is the feeling it should give off, this is the look it should have? 
No, I think that, you know, it also it depends on what we're currently working on. So it's very kind of contemporary with the current work. And we interpret it for a, for a cuff or whatever it is or a, whatever it might be. Um, yeah, so I think that um, it, it's, a, it's an interpretation of the idea which may have emerged through other sources or through other uh, working on other things, but it has obviously a uniqueness because it's not like other stuff we've done. So when do we get to see your interpretation of the pulse? I don't know, is it here? Oh, we're going to see some pictures. Can we show it? This is all a bit kind of last minute and exciting. This has only just oh. been released. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. This is... Wow. Whoa, look at that one. Yes. <laughs> That's my favorite one right there. Yes. Okay. Yes. There must be others. Yes. Boom. <laughs> hey. Bam. Wow. Yes. Boom. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what? <laughs> These, so, are, these are beautiful objects. Talk us through your thinking with a device like this one. What are you, what are you trying to say with it? I, I don't think it has a particular message necessarily, but I mean, we, we work on the idea of um, striation, for example, and um, how it could also have deflections. And from a very large object to a very small object, you can have uh, you can interpret this as a kind of very nice piece to, to touch and how to wear, and uh, but it also operates as a as a device. Uh, so you know you can wear it both ways or the same way, or you make a few of them. And, uh, it's like a bangle. And what kind of challenges do you face with materials for a new well, kind Well, I of think yeah, device? that's these are we have modeled them in the office, uh, but uh, I think that would be the next step. Uh, we haven't started that step yet. How it's going to be made? So you're really reinventing the successor to the telephone? So no, so that's a very, that's a very um, hard thing to ask because telephones, smartphones rule our world. But say, similar to people that have tablets, you probably still have a laptop. Folks that have tablets still have laptops. So folks that will have a pulse, that stand alone, that doesn't need a phone, will still have a phone, right? So you, and there's certain things that you're going to do on the Pulse that you won't be able to do on your smartphone. Just like there's things you can't do on your laptop that you could do on your tablet. You know? so, and that's what, that's what is going to allow this space to really truly grow. When you start thinking of what to do on your wrist differently from what you put and do on something that comes out of your pocket. Um, and, and the work that we're doing at IM Plus I'm so proud of our engineers and this collaboration because, as you can see, we're not the giants. We're not the big companies that have billions of dollars. We just have billion dollar ideas and billion dollar passion to see it done. And it's really not about the money, it's about why we're doing it, who's supposed to get inspired, and what direction they dream down, right? Dream down this avenue and aspire to have wonderful stuff you want to express yourself with. If we have a black one, I got a gold one. Check my diamonds. Black. <laughs> yeah, we have a, I have a white one, a pink one, a blue one. one. It actually works as a bag as well. Pink one, blue one, white one, red one. And this, and this bag right here is sound and power just by putting it in there. So it's pretty, pretty, pretty cool stuff that we've been working on. So, let's congratulate this guy. Yeah. 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 Yeah.